Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sade and I do all things DIY and home improvement and we are gonna be transforming my kitchen to look tidy like this from something like this. Now, as I pan around, you will be able to see the dirt. I can't believe that I'm exposing myself like this. However, this is real life and we do get dirty kitchens and houses from time to time because you know we use them we cook and all of those things and if you're anything like Rob you accidentally explode a bottle of Dr Pepper onto the floor and then don't wipe it up immediately so we are doing a full deep clean of the kitchen today which I was not looking forward to however now that it is done I am so glad here are the products that I'm going to be using now it is a bit of a mismatch of everything and I will be zooming in and showing you what I'm using like this so I'm going in with the SIF stainless steel spray on the toaster we've got some stainless steel here obviously so I'm just buffing it out and making sure that it's extra shiny I actually had uh, disinfected this and emptied the toaster tray but I showed you that in the last clean with me so I didn't think that you need to see it again but just giving that a little bit of a buff and then moving on to the kettle as well so everything's nice and shiny Next it's time to clean the sink so this needed just a little bit of a disinfect and a little bit of the stainless steel spray as well so I went in with the Seflora and a scrub buddy. Now the scrub buddies are very similar to the Minkies if you've ever used those. I don't really see the difference in them if I'm being honest and the scrub buddy worked really really well so it's got an abrasive side which is what I'm using here. When I say abrasive it's not it's not actually going to stain your sink or anything it's just a little bit more tough to get off some of those dried in dirt stains and then it's got a softer side that you can use to wipe things down with afterwards which is the pink side which I'll be showing you now so it just helps to kind of absorb all of those stains and all of the um, product that you've laid down and clean everything up now I was okay with how this looked however I thought it could look a little bit more shiny so I decided to go in with the pink stuff this stuff is crazy good now if you want to remove dirt and tough stains from anything like your sinks like your oven then definitely go in with this and I also use the combination with the elbow grease spray which is also amazing at lifting really tough dirt and stains and I just kind of spread that all over the sink and worked it in with the abrasive side of the scrub buddy just to make sure that I was lifting all of the grease and dirt that was left on the sink from just days and weeks of using it and not being able to kind of really get all of the grease and dirt off so just giving that a rinse over again does anyone else's drain do this the middle drain in our sink seems to fill up from time to time if we've got the dishwasher on and then I put the sink on really really annoying not sure why it does that but yeah let me know if yours does that as well because I want to know why uh, now moving on to using the sponge cloth now I got gifted these from an Instagram company sponge which are actually amazing I showed you them in my last with me and I genuinely do use them all the time and it just helps to give that shine that you just saw on the sink so I was much more happy with that knowing that I'd really thoroughly cleaned it so now I'm just dumping everything in the sink and you will see that I actually end up just wasting my time cleaning the sink because I actually end up putting loads of stuff into the sink and having to clean it all again anyway but now on to the oven, I'm using the Astonish Hob Cleaner. Now I did use this in the last clean with me and it is really good stuff. So I'm just giving the oven a little clean again. We've been deep frying loads of stuff like donuts and katsu chicken and making our own like chicken balls and stuff. So there's been a lot of oil splatter and stuff. So I just wanted to make sure that I lifted all of that oil and grease off of the surrounding area and that the oven was clean because not only is it dangerous, but it smells a little bit. And with us being in the house all the time, I didn't know if I was just getting accustomed to the smell because I couldn't really smell it that much. So I just wanted to make sure that I gave everything a deep clean so that it wasn't sitting there. As you can see, I went in with some cotton buds just to get into the deeper areas of the oven and clean them out just to make sure that there was no leftover residue or dirt there. And then I'm just replacing everything. These things are so difficult to put back on. I don't know why I find it so difficult, but I do. So uh, a little bit of a struggle there, but we managed to get them all back on, all nice and clean. We just push on by. I'm just cleaning everything that was around the oven area. As I said, we've been frying loads of stuff, so there's just gonna be grease that splatters onto my more decorative items around the oven. So I wanted to make sure that I was lifting all of that dirt and grease off of all of those items so that they are safe to put back around the area and that they're not holding any horrible smells. 
in them anymore so as you can see sink is messy again but it's fine we'll just give it a little once over at the end going in with the stainless steel spray from sif and that sponge cloth just to give the hob a nice shine as you can see here and then put in the grill plates back on When you're cleaning around your oven area don't forget to get the splash back or the tiles around it because if you are doing things like deep frying or even just general cooking to be honest you will get splatters on the tiles and it will hold some of those horrible stenches so make sure that you get everything nice and disinfected and clean and then you can go back in with your little decorative pieces so I just love chopping boards I've got an obsession try to not buy any more than this because I don't have a very big kitchen but I would love to have like just a massive chopping board station in a future home I don't know why I'm so obsessed with them I just am it's just my thing uh quick tip from me actually it's from my mum I shared this on my Instagram the other day and everyone loved it um I actually haven't cleaned these filters in the hood of the oven for a long time so as you can tell by my face they were stinky and they were slimy with grease in my fingers so I took them out just gave the hood a nice kind of disinfect and clean down with some of the elbow grease to make sure that I was removing some of those oils that had transferred there just through kind of cooking and stuff and then I'm going to pop those into the dishwasher the filters into the dishwasher you'll see that later on also guys don't come for me I'm not using the same cloth on the cupboards as I did on the greasy hood I've got several microfiber cloths when I'm doing deep cleans like this you can see them all piled up on the side so I just make sure to shift between them so that I'm not transferring oils and dirts and stuff but I've got plenty to make sure that everything is clean and sanitized just went in and emptied the dishwasher and put all the bowls and plates and cutlery away because we are going to deep clean this dishwasher now I must be honest I've actually never cleaned this we've been in the house about a year and a half but I just never realized that the sides of the dishwasher actually got dirty it's really weird things that you use to clean things you don't think would get dirty themselves but they clearly do so just went in with some of the elbow grease and a microfiber cloth just to lift most of which was just water marks and a little bit of dirt so nothing too serious now going in with the rinse aid that I picked up from B&M the other day, I decided to try this one out because I usually use the finish one and it's not major expensive but I just thought this one was nice and cheap, I think it was about £1.50, £2 so thought it would do the trick and it was a nice small bottle which I really appreciate because underneath my sink can get really cluttered so I appreciate smaller boxes and bottles. Talking about boxes, this is a pretty big box but it hides at the back and it is the Finnish dishwasher salts. I make sure to top these up every couple of months because if you want to make sure your dishwasher is cleaning things properly and isn't giving you watermarks and stains and kind of not getting grease off, you want to make sure that your rinse aid and your salts are topped up. Putting in the filters from the oven and I'm going to whack these on a high setting with a dishwasher tablet in just to remove all of that grease so that when they come out they are sparkling and clean which you will see because they definitely did and that is a top tip that I learned from my mum and everyone loved it on Instagram so if you haven't tried it go ahead and try it and if you haven't followed me on Instagram yet then please do it is underscore home of Sade I do loads of tips and tricks on there loads of DIYs and to be honest it's probably the best place to catch me because it's when I do stuff kind of like immediately so you will see updates from me every single day on my stories and posts of my home and stuff so if you do fancy it then head over to Instagram and follow me it's underscore home of Sade Oh my gosh, the dreaded oven. Honestly, I've been putting this off for weeks now. I saw how dirty it was and I did want to just buy some oven pride and just be done with it. However, couldn't find it anywhere. Hence why I'm going in with some of the pink stuff and a concoction of the elbow grease and another Astonish product, which I will show you in a little bit. But it honestly took a good 45 minutes of scrubbing all of these trays the glass of the oven at the inside of the oven and you'll see in a little bit I didn't manage to get everything off but it was a pretty good effort so I would suggest if you've got these products at hand and you need to give your oven a bit of a degrease you can totally do that you just need a little bit of physical elbow grease as well just to get off those tough stains the glass actually came up really well that wasn't too difficult it was the inside of the oven which was a pretty tough job and I actually didn't manage to clean it all so I will be going in with some more products that people have recommended me on my Instagram, I've actually bought a scraper for an oven and an oven uh, mat, which you put on the base of the oven to stop future incidents like this. So I'll link those down for you below so you can buy them. I think they're about one or two pounds each, so it's super cheap. And I'll be getting those later this week. So I will definitely do an update of that on my Instagram stories so that you guys can see. Now, 
If you don't do this, then you should try to. Please be careful when you do this though, because obviously you are working with the glass and if it shatters, you're gonna have to replace your glass. So this is just something that I do when I'm cleaning my oven, just to make sure I get into every nook and cranny. I take it out and I give it a bit of a deeper clean in the sink. Going in and scrubbing this whole area, as you can see, I'm just dipping into that pink stuff as much as I possibly can because I thought more product would mean that it would come up a little bit easier. And whilst it did, I think I needed something like a more abrasive scrubber to get this off because it just wasn't budging as much as I wanted to. Because I was struggling so much with the pink stuff, I decided to open up the Astonish Oven and Cookware Cleaner, which um, it smells really nice. I don't know if it really did much, to be honest. Someone on my Instagram said that I should actually use the Astonish Oven and Grill Cleaner, I think they said. So I'll probably try that out in the future because it's probably a little bit more um, suited to clean stuff like this. So honestly, it was scrubbing for about 45 minutes, guys. My arms hurt, I was sweating, it was hot as it was at the weekend but it needed to be done. So I was happy that I managed to lift most of the grease and stuff off of the oven. The glass came out perfect. As you can see, it was absolutely sparkling. So I just placed it out of the way whilst I went in again with some more of that Astonish Cleaner just to see if I could budge any more of the grease. Honestly, guys, I think I'm just gonna have to go for something like the Oven Pride and the scraper tool that I've bought just to make sure I get those really tough burnt stains out. So once everything was clean and I'd cleared it out and I'd dried it down, I just replaced the glass and put the bracket back in place to keep it all tight and secure. Guys, when you are cleaning your ovens, please make sure if you using things like the pink stuff or oven pride that you rinse them out thoroughly. I made sure to go in several times with damp microfiber cloths to make sure I got rid of any of the chemicals because you are gonna be using your ovens at high heats and it probably is a little bit dangerous. So please make sure you use gloves and you just take care when you're doing stuff like this. So the inside of the oven I was a little bit disappointed with but to be honest, I was just glad that I got the initial grease up but the glass looked really good. So moving on, I'm just gonna kind of degrease all of the products that I've been using and start to put away some of the product just because it was getting a little bit messy and I didn't need to use everything anymore. So next up we're going to be giving the sink a final decrease and clean because we are finally finished with using it. What I like to do with the sink is put some baking soda into the drain along with some white vinegar and some boiling hot water. This just helps degrease the entire drain system and then going in with some Sephora to clean everything. As you can see, having a little bit of a dance, guys. If you don't have a dance when you're cleaning, then what are you doing? It can be so tedious. So just put the music on full blast, have a little boogie and everything will be okay. Now, next up is the washing machine drawer. This wasn't too bad to be honest, but it just needed a little bit of a clean. So I just went in with some of the elbow grease and took out the drawer inserts, gave it a little rinse underneath the sink and then just tidied out the drawers, absorbing any of the water and the existing fabric softener and making sure that everything was clean. And I would just make sure that you keep on top of this guys, because I know sometimes they can get a little bit moldy and a little bit dirty. So just make sure that you're giving it a clean out every once in a while, but that was a simple enough job. So when I'm done with my microfiber cloths and my sponges and stuff, I put them all in the wash if they're able to be put in the wash, which most of them are, and I just go in with some washing powder and some of the Dettol washing liquid as well, just to make sure that they are fully anti-backed and sanitized because we've obviously been using them to clean the rest of the house. We wanna make sure that they are super, super clean. We're getting there guys, we're nearly done. Going in with the Hoover just to pick up any crumbs and dirt. I've linked this below, this is the Dyson Ball Hoover and I love this so much. It's bagless and it's really easy to empty and to clean out. Then I'm going in with my Rug Doctor. Again, I'll link this below for you. This is the Flex Clean. This thing is amazing. It works on carpets and on hard floors. I've also got the upholstery tool that comes with it so that you can clean things like your sofas and your stairs. So simple as you can see, I'm just giving everything a run once over and you will actually be disgusted at how much dirt comes up off of the floor. This thing, it tells you some hard home truths. You think that you're a clean freak? Buy one of these clean your floors and come back to me. This thing sucks up dirt like you would not believe. I've lent it to a couple of friends and they've cleaned their entire houses and they just can't believe it, so they're buying them themselves. So as you can see, look at the color of that floor. Now I must admit, we had been wearing shoes in the house we'd been out in the garden and it was a little bit rainy and stuff. So the floor was a lot more muddy than usual. We would never let it get this dirty, but we just kind of weren't bothered because we knew that we were gonna give everything a deep clean and a rug doctor. But the results speak for themselves entirely. So if you're interested, then head on down to the description bar. I've 
I've put the link to the Rug Doctor page there and you can have a look at all the different products that they do. Now onto the bin, just giving this a clean because I need to do this all the time to be honest. I don't like knowing that there's bacteria and stuff growing in the bin so I make sure to get down and dirty, cleaning it all out. I use some kitchen net towels just to make sure that I can throw them in the bin. All of my microfiber cloths were in the wash anyway but I would have just used tissue paper anyway to clean this sort of stuff out. So I've gone in with some Zaflora just to make sure everything's disinfected, getting all the areas of both the insert of the bin and the main bin itself, spraying it the side of the fridge where the bin lives just in case anything has managed to kind of grow its way up there and then as well the door behind. Now guys I am using different kitchen towels here so again don't think that I'm using the same one and wiping the bacteria around everywhere, I'm absolutely not. Just another tip for you guys that I learned from Instagram, grab some Zaflora or Fabulosa which is like a nice smelling disinfectant and put it at the base of the bin on some kitchen towel and then I'm just going to go in with the Dettol all-in-one spray to make sure that everything is bacteria free and sanitised. Then going in with my bin liner and I always get the drawstring ones, I prefer those a lot more, I feel like they're so much more easy to use and tie up and put away so I always always use those ones. And then I'm just freshening up some of my flowers, chopping off two centimetres diagonally from the end of the stems and replacing some of the water so that they keep nice and fresh and they can look beautiful in the kitchen. I always get comments on my Instagram like, are you frying your flowers today? <laughs> and no guys I'm not, it just looks really pretty you know so I always like to just have a little burst of flowers in the kitchen because it just helps to freshen everything up and it looks really spring like. Okay now we've cleaned those filters out from the dishwasher so popping those back in and everything is complete. Guys this took me a couple of hours but it looks amazing and it smells so good. If you did like this video please thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel. I put new videos out every week and I'd love you to join me on my channel. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.